the sea mother, the drowning goddess, the whip of whips, the patron goddess of all Kuatoa, Blibdulpulp, a paranoid, reality-denying deity of the sea with questionable sanity. In a world of clashing fiends and demons, high fantasy gods, stakes in the world always on the line, sometimes we just need to take a step back and embrace the little guy. In this case, the little guy is a 15 foot tall, nude human female with a lobster's head and claws. Blubdulpoop is an ancient deity of a race driven back from their earliest habitats. They used to live below and near oceans, along the surface. They have been pushed back by humans and allied demi-humans. These are the Kuatoa, who now populate only the Underdark, in mass competition with Illithids and Drow, some of the most fearsome enemies you'll find anywhere. Kuatoa, in short, are like fish people. They have paunchy shapes with arms and legs, slender and lithe despite their relative shortness. At the end of each limb, they have webbed hands and webbed feet. They have rubbery, scaly skin with a slippery slime giving their bodies a glimmering sheen. And their bodies were topped with fish-like heads, hosting a mouthful of sharp teeth and a pair of bulging silver black eyes. Like I mentioned earlier, the Kuatoa were driven back from the earliest times. At one point, they inhabited the surface and much of the oceans, lakes, and water features all around the material plane. Since then, they have been driven back, and their survival has depended on their newfound behavior. They became extremely suspicious, as well as duplicitous, betraying trust for their own benefit, so long as they believed they could do it successfully. They're willing to turn in family members they suspected of crimes, and as were such normally perceived as cruel monsters. But this is not the entire story. This mental oppression is a common tale in the Underdark, except the Kuatoa may have it even worse. They have suffered at the hands of other races for thousands of years, and all of this broke the already simple minds of most Kuatoa. As a result of this, madness is a common alignment amongst them. Kuatoa are not necessarily evil, but they do live within a repressive theocracy with very strict, rigid caste systems ruled by bloodthirsty priests. Whether the Kuatoa drove Blibdulpoop to this state or vice versa, Blibdulpoop exhibits a lot of these personality traits as well. First off, one of her driving forces is hatred towards humans and demi-humans for driving her race away from their homes and slaughtering them. She also hates drow and illithids as competitors for the little space her race has left. This has left her in a questionable mental status. Like the Kuatoa, she may not quite be insane, but she's unpredictable, irrational, and prone to wild mood swings. She now occupies a spot in the plane of elemental water, an area that is churning and swirling with emanations of her emotions. She surrounds herself with huge lobsters, crayfish, and other primitive crustaceans, which have changed little in form over the eons, as if to reassure herself that her powers have not changed or diminished either since then. And speaking of these huge lobsters, crayfish, and other primitive crustaceans, we should talk about her appearance. Not all editions picture Blibdul Poop, but the ones that do paint a similar picture. She appears as mostly humanoid. She is tall, but as the description from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons states, she appears as a large nude human female, except she has a lobster's head and clawed forearms, sounding more like a demon than a god. Second edition also describes her in this way. And though not much is known about her origin or her early existence, we do know that she was actually quite powerful. As an ancient deity, Blibdul Poop is said to know deep, magical secrets that are part of the fundamental fabric of the universe itself. She broods over these secrets and holds them to herself. She shuns all contact with other deities and does not share this knowledge. It is not known if she plans on doing anything with it or holds it out of spite, as there are not many gods that she gets along with. But she does have some followers outside of the Kuatoa. Since she is constantly fighting against the Drow and Illith in power, she has gained some credibility and therefore followers that are locked in battle everywhere to save the sea. Some of those clergy, in fact, have heard rumors of these long-lost magics that she alone holds. It has actually attracted the attention of many, but of course no one has ever gotten close enough to know the truth. Looking back at the Kuatoa, we can see a lot more of this caste structure and how Blibdul Poop, the Sea Mother, influences it. They are a completely theocratic society. Their settlements are even called shrines. Each shrine is dedicated to one god, the god, the Sea Mother, Blibdul Poop 
and smaller shrines rather radiate from these large settlements. All Kuotoan leaders are clerics, followers of Libdulbu. They call her the Whip of Whips, and that is what they call her priests or clerics. They call them whips. This caste structure is very much dependent on instilling fear to prevent the scheming that their culture now has. Fear, paranoia, and depravity are as much a part of Kuotoan culture as this religion is. This madness runs rampant though, and there are some signs that it is directly linked to Blibdulpu, as it's said that sometimes during their dark rituals dedicated to the Sea Mother, Kuotoa are known to spontaneously descend into madness. This madness results in an insane Kuotoa becoming a howling, bloodthirsty maniac when attacked or injured. Madness on an individual scale poses enough of a risk to Kuotoan civilization, but Kuotoa is facing even worse threat. Mental illness is contagious amongst the Kuotoa. This lunacy hops from one to the next. If Kuotoa witness a crime or event that is being done by an insane Kuotoa, they themselves have a 10% chance to fall victim and go insane themselves. So you can see how this goes out of hand quickly and can destroy entire civilizations of them. In these fights with the Illithid, of course, the Illithid captured the Kuotoa by the thousands, just like they did every other race of the Underdark, and forced them into bondage. By the time the Mind Flayers abandoned them, the prolonged psychic subjugation endured by the Kuotoa had shattered their minds. Another very possible reason why they have gone mad. These whips, the clerics of Blibdulpoop, are at the top of their societies, and sometimes Blibdulpoop blesses a Kuotoa clan with the birth of an exalted whip a monstrously powerful creature with the power to aid evil aquatic creatures. These dark rituals that I mentioned earlier are just as sinister as they sound. At this point, Blibdulpoop demands bloodthirsty worship. She demands frequent sacrifice of sentient beings. It is during these rituals which Kuotoa have a chance to go insane. Kuotoa are a lost species. They were not creatures meant to live on land. Much of what they do on land is a bizarre approximation of life under the water. And that is why their society seems so alien. Their names are a long series of gargling syllables like Blibdul Poop or the city of Sloop Dilmon Polyp, which if you ask a Kuotoa, I'm probably butchering all these pronunciations. However, the Kuotoa communicate as much through gesture as they do the speech. They pace constantly, don't stand still much. And of course, just any interaction with the Kuotoa is a strange one, with the Kuotoa fidgeting, prone to madness, and lashing out. And of course, since they are fish-like, they do lack eyelids, so they will never blink in conversation. She is powerful. She is a spellcaster, has access to numerous spells, and has immense control over water. She's extremely strong, and her lobster-like claws have an iron grip, which can potentially render victims insane if she looks into their eyes. In 5th edition, it says that if enough Kuotoa worship a god or believe it's real, the energy of their collective subconscious can cause that god to manifest as a physical entity. The form a Kuotoa god takes depends on the inspiration for its divine image. It's usually random or nonsensical. It is said that Blubdulpoop was likely invented by a Kuotoa that improved on a broken human statue by adding the limbs and head of a crustacean. In sudden awe of its handiwork, it then named the resulting form a god. This event would have had to happen a very long time ago, in the ancient times, but the Kuotoa were around then, so it is possible, perhaps, that this is the origin of Blibdulpoop. Unlike many other gods in D&D, it doesn't really seem like Blibdulpoop has any sort of plan. She's always on the back foot. The one question mark, the one piece of information we know nothing about, is this ancient knowledge that comes from the beginning of the world. Her people are mad, erratic, and they seem to be mirrors of each other. Her people are driven back, and she becomes insane. As a result, her madness and insanity is passed on to her followers. I don't think this is an intentional thing from her. She clearly only cares about the Kuotoa. She serves them in the way she knows how, devotes all of her magical efforts to them, and devotes all of her other time into fighting the Illithid and Drow to push back and gain some sort of foothold for the Kuotoa. So far, the Kuotoa have found no purchase. They have never been a particularly feared or respected race, pushed from one place to the next. And now that they have themselves backed with the Illithid, the Drow, the Dwergar, and all other monsters of the Underdark, it does not seem likely that they're going to break from the cycle that they are in. And while this is probably of no worry to most people in the world, 
insanity, deep magic secrets that are part of the fundamental fabric of the universe itself, and a race pushed too far with their backs against the wall is a dangerous combination. So think twice next time before you make fun of that Kuatoa, and maybe try to lend them a fin and help.